All right, so two more examples here of evaluating trig functions using the reference angle. So uh, again, I'm going to make use of my first quadrant unit circle here for sure. So we'll come back to that. So let's figure out in the first case here secant of negative pi over 3. So the first thing I really do, a couple things. Um, everything to me really goes back to sine and cosine. So to figure out secant of negative pi over 3, well, what is the definition of secant? Uh, secant can be uh, defined to be 1 over cosine. So that means secant of negative pi over 3 is going to be the same thing as negative or cosine of negative pi over 3. Okay, so now I'm going to try to evaluate this using the right side. But now that really says, well, what is the value of cosine of negative pi over 3? Okay, so that's the question I'm going to try to answer now. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to think about my angle and my reference angle. Negative pi over 3 would put us down in the fourth quadrant. But again, the reference angle is just the angle, uh, the, this angle between 0 degrees and 90 degrees uh, made by this terminal ray in the x-axis. Well, if we go down to this angle negative pi over 3, this reference angle is simply going to be equal to pi over 3. All right, so now I think, all right, to use cosine of negative pi over 3, I'm going to, in turn, replace that with its reference angle, which is, well, just positive pi over 3. And now I have to think, you know, do I need the positive or do I need the negative of that? Because the sine can change. Well, cosine, um, you know, in quadrant 4, cosine in quadrant 4, since it's the x-coordinate, it's already positive. Uh, when we use our reference angle, it's going to be positive by default because we're in the first quadrant. So to me, it says we really don't need to include that negative. It says just basically leave it alone. It says cosine of negative pi over 3 is going to be the same thing as cosine of positive pi over 3. So again, I'm just finding the reference angle and thinking in this quadrant, is it positive or negative? Um, well, now to find cosine of pi over 3, again, I just basically find my angle here, pi over 3. I think, what's the point that goes with it? It's 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Cosine, though, is defined to be the x-coordinate. So cosine of pi over 3 is simply going to equal 1 half. Okay, so we simply get 1 half. Well, now we can plug that back in okay, to our denominator. So secant of negative pi over 3 is going to be 1 over cosine of negative pi over 3 which we finally figured out was 1 half. So we'll get 1 divided by 1 half. 1 over a half, you just flip the fraction when you have 1 on top. That's just going to give us 2. So it says secant of negative pi over 3 is a fancy way for writing the number 2. Let's do, <clears throat> let's do one last one here, our cosecant of 7 pi over 6. So again, I'm going to do uh, the same thing. So cosecant of 7 pi over 6. Well, cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine of 7 pi over 6. So my goal in this case is to really figure out sine of 7 pi over 6. Alright, well the first thing I'm going to do is find my reference angle. Um, if we go sort of a half revolution, that would be pi radians. <clears throat> if we go a little further, we'll now be at 7 pi over 6 radians. So again, I'm just trying to find this reference angle, this angle in between the, uh, in this case, the negative x-axis and our uh, angle 7 pi over 6. Well, we can simply subtract 7 pi over 6 minus pi, which we can write as 6 pi over 6. Well, 7 pi minus 6 pi would just leave us with pi over 6. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to replace the angle on the inside with my reference angle, which is pi over 6. But again, these aren't equal yet, uh, so give me just one second here. So our unit circle, <clears throat> we know for sure that sine is going to be positive in this first quadrant. If we're in quadrant 3, is sine positive or negative? Well, 
Uh, sine has to do with the y coordinate, so since we're below the x axis, it's definitely going to be negative. So I need to include that negative uh, in here. Now they are equal because we'll get the correct value, but now we'll get the correct sine as well. So it says we'll get negative sine of pi over 6. Okay, let's find pi over 6. Uh, so here's our angle pi over 6. Again, sine has to do with the y coordinate, which is going to be 1 half. So it says we'll get negative sine of pi over 6, which is going to be negative 1 half. But now we have to do just the same thing again. We have to basically just replace it because we have 1 over sine of 7 pi over 6. So I'm just going to plug my negative 1 half into the denominator. So we'll get 1 over negative 1 half. We've got a positive over a negative, which is a negative. 1 over a half is just going to flip the fraction, which will give us 2 over 1 or negative 2. So it says cosecant of 7 pi over 6 is the same thing as negative 2. So, you know, these seem a little long. Uh, I think maybe the first few times you do them. Again, finding reference angles, you'll do this stuff so much, you'll definitely speed up. Again, then it's just really picking out signs, uh, positives or negatives, I mean. And as long as you can remember, again, this sort of uh, the stuff in this first quadrant, I think uh, once you practice a few, you can go through these uh, pretty quickly.